Well, right after uh, stopping the stream, uh, I got uh, a notification that there was new Intel Arc drivers that added support for the Tiles Principle 2. So I've uh, updated drivers and rebooted and all that. And uh, yeah, the main menu here is uh, not doing too well. It's kind of lagging and dropping frames here and there. So I also turned down some of the graphic settings, but we'll, we'll see how things go. Oh, this is interesting. There's stuff on my save file now. I guess this is the first time I've seen my save file, actually. Ooh, there's... different categories. Huh. Well, let's jump right back into things. You know what, maybe this- the- the unlimited frame rate is kind of affecting things- Whoa! Whoa! That was strange, the way the vision looked. Oh good, I'm right back. Or save, so it's good- it's good about remembering save positions at least, so that's good. I was worried I might have to repeat a conversation or something. That's Jeremy... Who was... See, this is the thing, I can't remember who was who. Who's the mayor? Uh... Does it say here? This is the conversation we just had at the meeting, but like... It doesn't say what their rules are, I guess I'm just expected to remember. <laughs> oh well. What can I do for you, 1K? Oh, I guess this is the mayor. I can recognize the voice at least. It was a time of great uncertainty. The Founder had left us, and our society was at a crossroads. History teaches us that during such times, terrible passions may seize the people. Madness, anger, revolution, civil war. Our fragile city could not afford such things. That is why the Founder gave us the goal, a path to equilibrium, not only for the planet, but for ourselves. I merely picked up where she left off. I don't know if it was coincidental, but after I asked the question and right as he was responding, I, I noticed like a sort of electrical sound and the way his head tilted at the same time. It's like it's almost like he's getting his information from elsewhere or like he's running a script or something. I don't know, it's just kind of an odd thing I noticed. I believe we can exist quietly, happily, without imposing ourselves on this world, finding meaning within ourselves and in the natural miracles that surround us. He is one of the first companions, and as such has done more for our city than you or I ever will. I simply wish he could be more... reasonable. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I expected as a response. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. Hello, 1K. This expedition is taking a lot of our resources. I'm really not sure it's a good idea. But... What's done is done. So I have a lot of work to get on with. Really? You're, uh, you're just kind of standing around there, you waiting for me to talk to you without wanting to admit it? <laughs> I'm the mayor's chief aide. Oh, the chief aide. For our people to be happy with what we have. Some of us may have an adventurous spirit, but that can never be sated. What matters to me is having my loved ones around me, safe and secure. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm sure other people will ask these options, but uh, this guy says he's busy, so I'll let him be busy. What happens if we go all the way back over here? There's like nothing over here, right? I wouldn't expect it to let me at this stage of the game, but just in case, I'm curious. 
Oh, that, that's just graphical pop because I turned the graphics settings way down. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, this actually works. Okay. <laughs> uh... Attention all citizens. Due to the new power management and distribution plan, there will be scheduled outages on Jameson Avenue and Rakovsky Plaza. The Gehenna Memorial Pavilion will remain closed for the time being. Thank you, and may the Founder be with you. Gehenna? So they know about Gehenna. It's interesting. I wonder how much it imports from my, my previous save file and such. Oh, this is a different elevator stopping place. Oh boy, that's uh... Nope! <laughs> that's too much for me! <laughs> that's uh... that's not something I'm gonna do right before bed. This is uh... It's getting quite late, actually. That whole thing I said about installing drivers and jumping right back in. Actually, a whole lot more time passed between then and now. Take me back up, please. I wanna go to that helicopter and get started with the adventure. We can explore all that stuff later. Explore New Jerusalem is optional. Yes, that, I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. That's- that's a very daunting task, and I intend to leave it for later. Don't mind the jumping maniac. Well, not really a maniac, but... Don't mind me jumping through here as I speed off into the next objective. Oops. So, what's the verdict? Are we going? I guess Byron was pretty convincing, hmm? Well, we'll see. I just wonder how much of the city is going to fall apart while I'm gone. Actually, we haven't been formally introduced. I'm Melville, New Jerusalem's only decent engineer. Saved you from the elevator. Pleasure. Now let's get this show on the road. You ready to go? Another achievement right there. Here we go. Hold on to your hats. We really need to update those language libraries. Thank you for coming along, everyone. We have a chance to make a real difference here. It's not just about what we find on that island. It's about who we want to be as a people, as a civilization to remind ourselves that we used to be wanderers, explorers. We used to yearn for distant shores and dream of building new cities. Let's see if we can rekindle that flame a little. All right, this is going to be a long journey. So I would like to ask you to switch to sleep mode to conserve power until we arrive at the island. Nighty night. You have chosen a dangerous path, a path that will demand sacrifice. But that, my child, is how the future is built. Wakey wakey, robot people. Say goodbye to Elohim and say hello to the mysterious island. Status report, please. We had some headwinds over the ocean, so fuel consumption turned out a bit higher than expected, but we should be okay. We're approaching the center of the island now. This should be the location of the largest of the artificial structures we detected. How large are we talking? Do we have precise measurements? It should be coming into view just about... Whoa. <laughs> it's big. You can say that again. That is a bloody mega structure. If I had a spine, it'd be shivering. Ha! I knew this would be exciting. Yakut! Find us a place to set down. On it. It really is incredible. Remember to turn on streaming, everyone? Have I ever mentioned that I hate flying? If our creators had intended us to fly, they'd have given us jetpacks. Oh, I guess they didn't find the jetpack. <laughs> touchdown. There's a jetpack Easter egg in one of the levels in Tales Principle 1. Alright, everybody. I'm sure you're all just as excited as I am, but let's at least have some semblance of order. Uh, Yakut, 
I want a map of the island and a molecular analysis of, well, everything. Melville, tell me what the giant pyramid does. The rest of us will start exploring. Shouldn't the expedition leader stay at the VTOL? Why do you hate fun, Al? I don't hate fun. I'm just mildly suspicious of it. Excellent. Then we can all go. This underground structure seems to be part of some kind of transport system. No power, though. I'm not making any promises, but I might... Wow, they, they, this is just a lot of dialogue back to back. I haven't even gotten to say my thoughts on what I wanted to say yet. So let's pause for a moment to talk, because uh, I noticed some things during the helicopter ride that had me think of some things. Uh, for one, this game seems to do that sort of automatic brightness level adjustment like Portal 2 does, where it's like faking HDR. I wonder if this game has actual HDR support. I have no idea. It probably does, given it's it's so new and all that, but uh, I don't have an HDR monitor. I don't plan to get one anytime soon. But uh, it's just kind of annoying that the, the automatic brightness thing works that way. Like, I'd rather have reduced dynamic range instead of that. <laughs> I get what they're trying to go for, though. The other thing is that that sleep mode moment was kind of interesting. I wonder what Elohim knows that we don't. Or if he's just playing off of our general anxieties. And I also think it's kind of suspicious, because it could be that the journey didn't actually happen. Like, this this could be another nested layer of simulation here. Sorry, simulation here. Like, this might not even be the real world for real. Like, this could just be another layer of tests. We don't even know yet. We'll be able we'll to fix the transport system. However, I don't like just randomly poking at things. That's how you get electrocuted. So please check the surrounding structures to see if you can find anything that might help me make sense of this stuff. Schematics, blueprints, a manual would be great. Oh yeah, I'm glad I turned down the graphics settings because this is still not performing the best. The, uh, the Steam floor page minimum graphics requirements were actually pretty low. Like, they listed a rather old, low-power GPU. But, uh... Clearly there's still a lot of stuff going on that's using up a lot of resources. Like, my GPU is pegged at 100% right now. <laughs> it's an Intel Arc A770 16GB limited edition. It's serving me well so far, but uh, this game seems to be really testing it. Hey, 1K, check out these coordinates. Did not expect this kind of gameplay, to be honest. <laughs> I know you all have been looking forward to playing the winners of the biannual Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Exhibition, now in a 312th edition at the Gehenna Memorial Pavilion. Unfortunately, due to our new power management and distribution plan, the pavilion will have to remain closed a little longer. Thank you for your patience. This is disappointing. It would have been great to have them ready for completion day. We all have to make sacrifices to stay true to the Founder's vision. Those text adventures are the only thing that breaks me out of the monotony. Why prioritize this pointless completion day celebration over an exhibition that people actually care about? Art is one of the, light the last things we actually still do. Is that going out the window as well now? Debate regarding our power management plan is definitely welcome, and you will all be able to express yourselves in the next election. But this thread was just meant as an announcement. I apologize for enabling replies to begin with. <laughs> uh. Check out these. Okay, how do I access the coordinates, though? I don't see it here. Is it in here? No. No? This is all stuff I read last time, right? Oh, I like this music. It's interesting how they're struggling with power management, but they're also saying that they're in balance. There's certainly a lot of questionable things going on. There's there's a lot of dumping of subtle hints in this introduction. Like, there's so many subtle hints to so many different plot threads, it's kind of difficult to keep track of it all. I wonder what's behind those? Has to be something special, right? You know what will be special? An explanation. These look like the, um, secret things from the 
when you get enough stars, you can unlock a hint, you know? Hey, it's the cat! <laughs> Alright, I was told not to go in the water. What actually happens if I do, though? <laughs> That's what I'm curious about. Well, so far nothing too terrible is happening. It's definitely struggling. But that's okay. I don't mind struggling the same way. It's kind of a theme for this channel, to be honest. We can get up, we can get up here, at least. Oh, we can walk up this, even. Not seeing much here, though. Like, fall damage is not really much of a concern. Huh. They really teased us with that introduction of solving a few puzzles, and now we're playing a whole different game. <laughs> I mean, imagine if I had taken the time to explore the, the city like that. That just would have been... Maybe multiple episodes, even. I don't know. This I seems won't... different from the other structures. Older. Have a look around, 1K. But yeah, like, maybe I would've condensed it all into one episode or something. I don't know really how I'm gonna pace this series, to be honest. Some sort of experiment here. Project 1 schematic. Interesting. Wait, this is different from what I clicked on, isn't it? On the Universe. A fragment from Stratton's On the Universe. Amintas, I grant you, then, that the man is indeed like Talos and cannot escape his material nature despite the claims of metaphysics, as you have many times said. Nekomakas. Too many, perhaps. Stratton. Repetition is the mother of teaching, at least when the students are hard-headed. Amintas. But what does this tell us about the nature of the universe, which is what we were discussing? Strat. That is the next question we must undertake to answer. We begin with the self because that is what determines our existence as individuals, but the self cannot exist without that which surrounds it. The citizen lives within the city, and the city lives within the cosmos. So now we must apply the principle we have discovered to the wider world and ask, if a man is like a machine, could it be that the universe is similar in nature? And if so, what follows from that fact? Footnotes. The use of the term metaphysics in this contest is likely an error introduced in the Trebizond manuscript. The fragmentary Heraclion manuscript controversially uses superstitions instead. 
this is an interesting thing about how life is defined. There, there are some ways to view cities themselves as being alive because, you know, cars going in and out, people going in and out, materials and raw resources going in and out are consumed and all that. In much the similar ways that human bodies work and other animals and such. And there's also questions about if the universe itself could be considered a living thing or... we don't know, because the, the observable universe is very small compared to the what else could be beyond the edges of what we can observe, so we might never know. Just interesting stuff to think about. Trials. Interesting. Testing failure. Power grid too unstable. Hmm. Seems like power is a real struggle in this world. Send a schematic to Melville. Done. Thanks, 1K. Let's see what we've got here. The file format is the same one we use in New Jerusalem, although... Some parts aren't loading correctly. And it crashed. Hold on. There we go. Okay. You know what? That sort of looks like a temple. Uh oh, did I cut off dialogue? Don't tell me this is a game that lets you cut off dialogue. No! <laughs> That's gonna make me so annoyed. Tell me I can read the rest of what I missed. Uh, log. Okay, I can read the rest of it at least, but it's, I'm so annoyed that it cuts off the voice acting like that. That's really annoying. I'll hack together a solution for the transport system. Yakut, why did you cut off Melville? Why? <laughs> uh. I wasn't entirely sure what to call this. Looks like a temple and sort of astronomy themed. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I do that. It doesn't seem to be active in any way, but I can't help but think that the design applies some kind of significance. I think it's hiding a secret. But again, maybe imagination maybe my imagination is getting the better of me. <sighs> oh, interesting. Maybe this is what these other icons are about on the save screen. I now know what this button is now, at least. There's supposed to be more than one button here. I hope that dialogue getting cut off didn't break things. Oh, <laughs> the temptation. What if I just jumped? Return to the station. Oopsie! I didn't actually mean to jump, that's just kind of, uh... <laughs> I slipped. Like, I, I really did not mean to jump yet. Okay. We will not question the lore significance of what just happened... quite yet. We need to conduct more experimentation. I'm surprised it took so long to load, though. Ooh. I like the aesthetics in here. A combination of circuitry and star imagery. You know, space, astral, star imagery. Celestial. I need to take inspiration from this. Getting the schematics will give us more purpose with which to wander around. And maybe that's why they want me to go back, so they can get a working copy of the schematics or something. Yeah, get up there from here. Turns out 
station. Which station does it want me to return to exactly? The ship or some other station? It's actually kind of an enclosed space, like there's not really many places to wander off to. I like the music. This kind of reminds me of Age of Empires, this part here. Uh, Age of Empires 2, actually. Oh, what was that? Oh, just a tree. That sounds like a, a waystone or something. This is clearly not the station they wanted me to return to. Was it the station where I got the schematics from? Is that considered a station? That was not exactly made clear to me. Is this... Oh! Or did that thing just materialize out of thin air? Melville, I want an analysis of that particle cloud. On it. Anyone got a butterfly in it? Let's go ahead and try to catch exactly. okay. Oh, it wants me to press E instead of left click. Why? That's an odd interaction change. I'm connecting the transport system to our interface. Hold on. Grasslands Ring, East 1, an artificial ring-like structure on the wide lowlands east of our base camp. What are these icons? Interesting. Hmm. These are the icons on the save hall, right? Well, let's go. Where is the capsule taking 1K? to that enclosed area in the eastern lowlands. I put all the information we have on the map screen. Check out your interface. Thanks. Sorry. My bad. We'll catch up with you soon, 1K. This game is really overwhelming. <laughs> then again, I haven't played games in a while, so... Or the area, you don't say. This place is magnificent. Look at that tower. I wonder what it's for. Well, that's familiar looking. Is this because I turned my graphics settings down? Is there supposed to be something for these leaves to be resting on? Probably because I turned my graphics settings down. I can't blame him for that. Go oh, underneath the track. That's, that's cool. Why can't I walk on this one? I can walk on the other one. Okay. Tower from Tower of Crystal 1, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
That's a frog! There's things still alive in this world, that's good news. I mean, obviously, because there's plants and trees and such, but... You know, there's animals still. You think that frog is conscious? <laughs> uh. I don't even know what kind of things would be like secrets. If there'd be stars or other things, but there is a lot of secrets in these eggs in Tau Sisko 1. On a this? puzzle? Oh, now there you go. Why would there be a puzzle? Let's solve it and find out. 1K, go ahead. I have a reoccurring nightmare just like this. Interesting. So this is the thing that we saw in the room where we got the schematics. That device was not in the simulation. That's about what I expected to have happen. Oh, right, I forgot to... There we go. So I'm gonna get commentary on my puzzles now, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm not expecting that kind of experience in this game. Simple enough. Interesting mechanic. I'm not sure. I mean, it does add some variety. I'm just curious to see how things are going to turn out from here with this mechanic. It's not something I would have thought of right away. Use what wheel? Rocket wheel? Whoa! I'm reading an enormous energy spike. It's another particle cloud. It's headed for the lake. Oh, they can't follow it. I think the cloud's been absorbed by some sort of device. Fascinating. Melville? Yeah, yeah. I'll add it to the pile of weird stuff. <laughs> the pile of weird stuff. <laughs> Prometheus Terminal? Excuse me? Was that in the other one? Did I miss that? Oh yeah. This fire has already been free to seek the light elsewhere. Okay, I just- I missed this, apparently. You have no tokens! Is this the hint system? <laughs> you are not alone in your quest for the light. Find one of my sparks and I will free the fire hidden in this labyrinth. You are not alone. Is that why one of those other structures appeared? Because there's somebody else here also solving puzzles? Am I on a time limit? <laughs> oh dear. Looks like Prometheus has given us a way to circumvent some of these puzzles. Yep, hint system. So each puzzle has a... backdoor. I guess the mythological Prometheus was kind of a trickster, so that tracks. I did not expect 
expect to hear music like this in the game. <laughs> I've been playing around with this machine that absorbs the particle clouds. As far as I can tell, it uses the energy of the particles to build giant tetrominoes? Excuse me? It's another puzzle. Collect enough energy, build a bridge, access the tower. I think. What is this? A theme park? <laughs> Maybe it's an experiment. Yeah, a theme a park maze. sounds like a good description. It seems like an echo of the simulation. Not a deliberate recreation, but built around the same core principles. Let's not jump to conclusions, though. What's clear is that this place was meant to be explored. So let's do that. Gate. Interesting. Well, we got right back to the puzzles rather quickly, so I won't complain. an interesting symbol. I wonder what the relevance of it is. I suppose we shall find out. A statue of something with some symbols around it. Oh my goodness, are we gonna have to... Is that a purple barrier floating above the trees? Are we gonna have to go... Explore this entire place. I suppose that's the game. <laughs> yes, that would make sense. Castling. I know some people who like chess. I'm guessing that's going to be the same as before. samples I collected so far. The soil sample results are in line with what would be expected in this type of environment. The samples from the above ground structures though, I tried dating them, but the results just don't make sense. None of the typical molecular markers are present. These walls could have been made 10,000 years ago or yesterday. I could try to estimate an age based on erosion and plant growth, but I'm not sure that would make sense given how weird everything else is. Good work, Yakut. Keep at it. So is this for, or is this something else entirely? Hmm. A 
let's find out. Oh, this is... Okay, so this is where we just get more information to read. Hypatia's Journal Number 1. From Hypatia's Journals Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem. Day 1. We finally set out from the dam today. The site that Athena and Cornelius picked for the city isn't far, but the vegetation makes the going difficult. We found the secondary supply site easily enough, thanks to Alexander Drennan's instructions, but while I have still... Sorry. But while I still have to compile a detailed inventory, it seems that many of the more complex materials are in bad shape. They must have expected the simulation to fulfill its purpose a lot sooner. But then, they are probably expected all 12 of us to be there from day one, not just Athena. Tonight we have to use the two recharging pods that we brought from the dam in four hour shifts, which is just as well. There's no telling what sort of critters are hiding in the undergrowth, and most of them will have to learn that our kind isn't edible. <laughs> Baby Steps. Author Valerie Contria Romero. Location Bella Extet 2. From the introduction to Are We There Yet? Where We Came From, Where We're Going, and Why You'll Need S sorry, and Why You'll Need Snacks by Valerie Contera Romero. I am have trouble reading it. It's getting late at night. I'm gonna have to go to bed after this. Sometimes, people point at the last few hundred or thousand years of human history and say, Look at how ugly it is. How, how ugly it all is. Look at what a mess we've made. Maybe modernity was a bad idea. Maybe we should stick to living like cavemen. And I get it, it is ugly and messy. But the mistake is thinking that where we are right now is the end point. That this is the adulthood of the human species. I mean, try to apply what you know about human development to human history. Think about babies. Babies are ugly. Admit it, we all know it. They look like tiny old people covered in mucus. They have soft heads, and they grow into children, tiny sociopaths with underdeveloped brains. And then they become teenagers, perfectly self-righteous lunatics driven by hormones. And then slowly, if you're lucky, they gradually become adults. The development of the human individual is always ugly and messy, but that's the point. It's development towards something. The same applies to humanity as a whole. On a geological scale, we've barely just come into existence. We've gotten through the baby phase, and just about survived our childhood, but we're barely teenagers. Stopping here would be disastrous, and a betrayal of everything that we could still become. We may feel the weight of history on our shoulders, but this is just the prologue. To put it in pop culture terms, we haven't even made it out of the tutorial yet. Just because it's all pimples and hormones and frustration right now, doesn't mean it's never going to change. I like this one. I just, uh, you know would like us to get past this phase a bit more quickly in the real world, you know? From Considerations of Beginnings and Endings by Elwyn. Uh, the Dead City is what this is called. I think all that time Athena spent in the Dead City changed her. I don't think she had conceived of the goal before. I think she believed fully in the naively optimistic ideas of Alexander Drennan. But walking through those ruins is a visceral experience, and she spent a great deal of time there looking for resources. It's the sheer amount of death that gets to me. How many animals our ancestors killed? Many to the point of extinction. Entire species eradicated, sometimes for the most superficial reasons. Whenever humans arrived somewhere, death would follow. And then, the great blowback. The deaths of billions of thinking beings. The extinction of humanity itself. It's too horrific to truly imagine, but I suspect the Founder spent a great deal of time doing just that. That's when she must have realized that there was no way back to the growth-obsessed, all-consuming civilization of the past. Yeah, there's there's a lot to be considered in terms of, uh, growth as a species, and when, when to maintain a balance and all that. How that, all that should work. It's, it's way above my pay grade, though. This game also... Reminds me in some ways of Horizon Zero Dawn. I guess they're tackling similar subject areas here. Okay, here's four. The sign was a little bit misleading. I like that they kept the jump here in this game. That's 
It's gonna make it so much fun to break things. I'll set this up first. There we go. Oh, it doesn't let me point at it and connect it through the glass. Interesting. I have to move this out of the way, turn on the fan, and then connect them while holding this. Yeah, okay. Yep, as expected. So this is basically a tutorial where they force you to use the right-click option. That's basically what this is. But otherwise it's really easy. <laughs> That's why it's called alternative options, because you use the alternative use from the first game. You have to pick up with the right click. Oh, you've got something to say, huh? Well, that was weird. Hey, 1K, what's up? Your face kind of glitched out. Is that supposed to happen? <laughs> I don't know if there's much to tell. I'm not that interesting. I'm just a member of the scavenging team. Well, senior member. Lead scavenger, I guess. There's not that many of us left, to be honest, and Garrus doesn't get along with the mayor. What else? Uh, I have a cat named Bruce. I like old music. Um, I have a collection of antique bottles. I think that's it. I've always loved exploration, seeing new places, that feeling that you're the first person to set foot somewhere after all this time. But you know, it, it's, it's not even that. It's just seeing new things. The world is full of remarkable sights and experiencing them changes you. It's not the same as just reading about it. But you don't know what's out there. Every time I go on another mission, I find something that surprises me, that extends my horizons in ways I couldn't have anticipated. How can you attain any wisdom if all you know is yourself? The world is so much bigger than we are. It contains things that we can't even imagine. And if we limit ourselves to our own minds, we'll never grow. Yeah, the game forced me into a false dichotomy there. You, you do need both halves of that coin. And the game made me pick one option or the other, specifically so it could make that point. Who knows? I could be wrong. It's just how I feel. Alright, what else is there? Let's check, let's check the sign, actually. Only five is in this direction, so I will trust the sign. Yep, five is still in this direction. We might go more out of order in other places, but we're just gonna follow the signs that go in order. Oh, more stuff to read. Oh, there's an audio log, I suppose. The Life of Trevor. Trevor Percival Donovan, known to his friends simply as Trev, never as Percy, was part of the extended lifespan project that formed the backbone of the simulation in the Archive. He helped put together the hardware that made all of us possible. Like Alexander Drennan, he left behind a series of messages to the future. But unlike Alexander Drennan or al Qaeda, Chernevsko, uh, they pronounced that name and I already forgot how it was pronounced. He was forgotten. Not one building or street in New Jerusalem is named after him. I dug up his pals from the Archive, and I've been thinking about them a lot. Really? How come? New interface available, huh? So I heard that Alexandra is recording these time capsules for... You? Out there, I guess? Robot people of the future! Hi! And I thought to myself, surely they'll want to hear more than the wisdom and insight of a brilliant scientist like Alexander Drennan. Surely they also want to know what I was thinking, a dumbass hardware engineer from Staten Island. Tell us about your insights, Trevor. 
Why did you spend your last months on Earth helping a crazy old Russian guy build the world's biggest backup drive? Well, let me tell you my story. When I was... Yeah. Yeah, yes, Frank. I'm recording right now. Uh-huh. No, no. Y you know what? Why don't you go... F well, okay then. Through the door, huh? Wow, they have these everywhere. You can just jump to everything. Here's a more traditional connector. Traditional jammer. Ooh, that's interesting. We've got a new design. Nice to see these purple fizzlers actually in the puzzle, as opposed to just at the entrance. That was something they didn't start doing until the DLC. Like, they didn't really have that in the main game of Talos 1. Alright, I see how this is gonna work out. Standard Slopperoo affair. Maybe that's one of those things where you don't actually need it. Let's just do this for now. Uh, okay, you can't look exactly straight down, apparently. Hmm, that's kind of an issue, isn't it? Can the jammer see this? Oh yes, I bet the jammer can see this. That explains things. <laughs> that was funny. Put that there. And then the jammer can act on that one instead. And there we go, now we don't need anything on that button. And so we can... light this up. There we go. Problem solved! Incoming group call. I have good news, and I have bad news. Still no idea what those particle clouds are, but I've managed to fix the transport system. I mean, I've fixed another bit of it. Well, it goes to one more station now. Don't complain. Two stations are better than none. Sarcasm. Famously helpful. Hey, I wasn't being Why sarcastic. Why did we bring you along again? It meant to be a joke. No, it wasn't. What? I- what? Why? Excuse me? You're just gonna make me n pick one of these options that all agree with what that was said? I didn't want to be sarcastic. How was I supposed to know that was sarcasm? Ah, that's why you're not scared of me yet. Let's stay focused. We're in unfamiliar territory. We can't afford to get distracted. Al's right. Yakut, what does the next site look like? It's a plateau in the mountains. Seems like more of an open area with scattered structures. Less enclosed. Couldn't tell much from the drone feed. There's a lot of trees. Looks pretty, though. Okay. Keep exploring, everyone, but stay alert. I, uh... I just noticed something that makes me very upset. One moment, please. Oh, okay, that's, uh, happening. No! OBS deleted all my microphone filters! Why did that happen? What am I supposed to do about that? Well, uh, I guess the microphone audio for this episode is just gonna be terrible. 
I'm gonna have to recreate all my filters and... I don't know if you're gonna make a backup of that? Why did that happen? I am so sorry for the audio being so terrible. Uh, yeah, let's just... let's just call it quits for... for today, I suppose. Oh, that annoys me.